Impressed by the incontrovertible evidence in the form of a recently discovered ancient human skull, one anthropologist of the British Museum fantasized on what the creature must have looked like and wrote, He was a man of low stature, very muscular, and had not yet attained that graceful poise of the body which is so characteristic of the human race today. He knew how to make fire and a hand axe. He gambled about the countryside as naked as a monkey, flashing an admirable pair of canines, and his cranium could hold two pints of Carlsberg beer. As a result of the unique combination of a primitive jawbone with a modern-looking brain case, the ancient human was given the species name Eoanthropus dorsoni, after its discoverer, Charles Dawson. On December 18, 1912, scientists presented the skull and mandible, as well as other artifacts, to the British Geological Society. The fossil was, in fact, an orangutan jawbone, paired with a 500-year-old modern human brain case. This meeting was immortalized in a now infamous painting, which has come to symbolize scientific fraud and forgery. As early as 1915, one American anthropologist accused the British of outright fraud concerning this fossil. In fact, deliberate malice could hardly have been more successful than the hazards of deposition in so breaking the fossils as to give free scope to individual judgment in fitting the parts together. As a result, no less than three restorations of the skull were made, while the canine tooth was assigned to both the right lower mandible and the left upper jaw. The estimates on the capacity of the brain case also ranged widely from 1,070 to 1,500 cubic centimetres, the American wrote. Regarding the fractured condition of the mandible, Dr. Pycraft of the British Museum wrote that the wretched pickaxe added yet another obstacle to identification. It cut off the forepart of the jaw, bearing the front cheek teeth, the eye teeth, or canines, and the cutting teeth. However, according to other experts, the missing pieces of the jawbone had rotted away, while still others thought that the pieces had been broken off naturally. In The Lost World, published in the spring of 1912, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle made references to a practical joker and to prehistoric bones vamped for a forgery. If you are clever and know your business, you can fake a bone as easily as you can a photograph, was the famous line from the book. Conan Doyle lived near Charles Dawson and the site of the fossil discovery, so this is a very intriguing quote. Now, a message from our sponsor, Incogni. Did you know that commercial databases and people search websites collect your personal information, including your social security number, names, aliases, phone numbers, home addresses, passwords and email addresses, as well as your location and browser history? It's easy to see how these sites expose you to a variety of risks, namely identity theft and fraud. In fact, the possibilities of your personal information being leaked are real and increasing. According to the annual Data Breach Report by the Identity Theft Resource Center, 2023 was a record-breaking year for data compromises, with a 78% increase from 2022. However, it is nearly impossible for an individual to request their information be removed or to pursue legal action. This is why Incogni is an indispensable tool. They contact data brokers on your behalf to request that your personal data be removed. Furthermore, because many data brokers continue to gather your personal information even after you request removal, Incogni monitors these databases and ensures that your data remains off the market by completing multiple removal requests, which is why an annual subscription is so essential. Use the code HIGHLY COMPELLING with the link in the video description to receive an exclusive 60% off an INCOGNI yearly plan. It is not known exactly when this forgery was created, but there was a presentation by Dr. Arthur Keith in London regarding human evolution in the spring of 1912, and it is possible the This Hoax was inspired by this presentation. Sometime in 1912, Dr. Arthur S. Underwood, a dental surgeon who attended the presentation, was brought in to write a report about the unusual jawbone discovered in a field about 50 miles south of London. His report was just four pages, with only two X-rays of the jawbone, which were taken from the incorrect angle. Furthermore, it has now been determined that the two molars in the jawbone were removed, filed down, and then replaced. 
This is a stunning fact that has not been addressed before. In fact, when questioned why the fossil teeth appeared to be worn so flat, Dr. Underwood wrote that in fact he had seen orangutan teeth that were worn very flat, just as in the fossil jawbone. Only an expert in ape jawbones and teeth could have created such a chimera, such as this jawbone. How did Dr. Underwood miss this important fact? How did he fail to notice the similarity with orangutan jawbones, especially when he wrote about the orangutan skull and jaw in a book only ten years prior? This evidence is shocking because Dr. Underwood has never been suggested as possible suspects in the forgery. Moreover, important evidence that the jawbone came from an ape was dismissed as early as 1913. Sir Ray Lancaster, the former head of the Natural History Museum and close friend of both Arthur Conan Doyle and Charles Dawson, also wrote about the difference between orangutan and human teeth in a book he published in October 1912, just two months before Euanthropus Dorsoni became public. The fact that both Dr. Underwood and Dr. Lancaster wrote about the difference between human and orangutan molars and jaws is a remarkable coincidence. As a matter of fact, the dentist Dr. Underwood and the zoologist Dr. Lancaster would have been the only ones with the knowledge to be able to effectively mutilate the orangutan jawbone and file down the teeth in this manner. How could both of these experts have missed the jawbone as being from an orangutan? It defies comprehension that these men, on whose expert opinions Dr. Smith Woodward and others depended, observed nothing unusual about the fossils. Smith Woodward was the leader of the scientific team reporting on the discovery, but he seems to have been duped by Dawson, Lancaster and Underwood. Meanwhile, Lancaster and his apprentice, Dr. Pycraft of the British Museum, authored numerous pieces for newspapers to influence the public. They also released books and scientific papers debunking other scientists who argued that Eoanthropus was not a true new species. They spread disinformation regarding the fossil to influence scientific and public opinion. The forgery worked for a variety of reasons. To begin with, the forgers were well aware of what they were doing. The forgery itself comprised a plethora of plausible confirmatory evidence. Second, the concept of human evolution from ape-like predecessors was relatively fresh, with new ideas sprouting and expanding quickly. Indeed, Charles Darwin had died only thirty years before. Most crucially, the forgery emerged from a perfect storm of scientific and non-scientific events. Notably, the period coincided with significant paleoanthropological finds in Germany, France, Indonesia, and elsewhere throughout the world, which included the famous Neanderthal Man and Java Man fossils. But now let us turn to the British Museum's ill-fated first construction of the ancient skull, created by Dr. Smith Woodward, an expert in prehistoric fish. Owing to his imperfect knowledge of human anatomy, also shared by Dr. Pycraft, an expert in birds, he made a grave error over the reconstruction. The incompetence at the museum at South Kensington is understandable, for clearly the department did not know what the fossil was about. In fact, anatomist Dr. Arthur Keith of London argued that the owner of the skull, as reconstructed by the Natural History Museum, would be unable to eat or breathe. Remarkably, the British Museum's first reconstruction of the skull went against everything that was known regarding human anatomy. Though human evolution was not his area of expertise, Dr. Smith Woodward waded into the subject, hypothesizing that both the skull and the mandible must be ancient, in which case it appeared probable that they came from the same individual. If that was the case, he was arguing the existence of a creature with a brain the size of a modern human, but a jaw and teeth somewhere between human and ape. Nevertheless, Dr. Smith Woodward was criticized for his lack of leadership, and some scientists were genuinely perplexed at his dogmatic views of the fossil and unwillingness to listen to scientists outside of his small circle. Dr. Lancaster was a strong supporter of this hypothesis, and he wrote about it multiple times, notably in a book published in 1915 that explored Eoanthropus dorsonii, whom he referred to as the all-important missing link. As a point of fact, Dr. Lancaster wrote that he believed there could be the bones of a dozen of these ancient humans at the discovery site. Lancaster also wrote in his 1915 book that the Eoanthropus was one of the most important fossil discoveries of all time, and that its significance was actually underappreciated. 
It is obvious from his books and letters that the scientists at the British Natural History Museum were in lockstep with Dr. Lancaster's views. What's more, there is still a pervasive myth that scientists back in 1913 did not have the expertise and the technology to prove that Eoanthropus was a fraud. But this is untrue. In fact, there were many experts who realized that the jaw and the skull did not belong together, and the only technology one needed to prove this was a microscope and a simple chemical test. But scientists that were not part of the Natural History Museum were never allowed to conduct their own tests, and in most cases they only had access to a replica of the fossil, not the real thing. Indeed, obvious evidence of forgery was so neglected by Dr. Smith Woodward and his assistant Dr. Pycroft, he truly may not have been aware of it, or at least he wasn't thinking about it as he examined the newly excavated mandible, the skull, the flint tools, and the mammal bones that were truly ancient which had been found with the human fossil. The British Museum truly believed they had found the so-called missing link and were eager to show the fossil to the world, so eager that the institution failed to undertake key tests that were fully within Dr. Smith Woodward's capabilities. For example, he should have analysed the skull and mandible for organic and chemical remnants, such as analysing the nitrogen concentration. Were these tests purposely avoided, or were the tests conducted, but the results were never made public? This test would not have disclosed the bone's exact age, but it would have demonstrated that they were not hundreds of thousands of years old, thus revealing the fraud. Smith Woodward or Dr. Underwood could also have examined the teeth using a magnifying glass, which would have revealed that they had been filed. Therefore, by avoiding such testing, the museum was effectively dismissing the possibility that bones of a human and an ape from different time periods had ended up in the same gravel pit, either accidentally or on purpose. Did Charles Dawson have any expertise in human anatomy? His previous forgeries are known to have involved dinosaur bones and petrified fish, and were nowhere near as elaborate. Whomever the mastermind behind the forgery, he knew that recruiting an expert in human teeth would be needed to convince other scientists of the validity of the fossil. Dr. Underwood was publicly criticised for his inadequate report on the fossil jawbone just before he died of a heart attack in December 1916, a few days before the four-year anniversary of the unveiling of the new human species, Eoanthropus dorsoni. Dr. Underwood was 62 and died of a heart failure only four months after Charles Dawson died of a mystery illness at age 52 in August 1916, this fact adds to the need to find out who was involved in the conspiracy and whether it could have involved something more sinister than only fake bones. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Please share, comment, and check out the other videos on our channel. Thank you and take care.